Hello, New York. <laughs> You're listening to 108.4 on your FM dial. Okay, it's time for the what haps on After Dinner with Glenda. So let's see what we got here. We got presidential elections. Nah. World news. Not right after dinner. Let's see. Business. Ooh, here's something. Mysterious ponderosa pine tree appears out of nowhere on the corner of 97th and Lexington in East Harlem. Now, I just love a good mystery. So, who done it? How did it get there? I want to know who planted that ponderosa pine tree. So Superman it over to the nearest phone and give old Glenda a call and tell her all about it. The mystery of the lonesome pine wasn't a mystery to me. Because I knew the whole story. My name is Eddie. I live in New York City. East Harlem, to be exact. Here's where I go to school, PS72. School's tough, but it's a lot more fun ever since I got a teacher named Miss Tolliver. Salva makes us keep a journal. And I want you to write about what you learned today. I took the idea and ran with it. Perfect checkup. Oh, hi, Eddie. Come on in. Right next to that rectangle is a whole bunch of triangles. My mom has lots of names for this mess, but I call it my file. a couple of weeks ago when I received a video letter from my friend Kelvin. Whoa. Trees, Eddie. Tons of trees. Whoa. Pretty cool, huh? Nothing like East Harlem. Kelvin used to live in the neighborhood. Then his family moved out west to Carson City, Nevada. Hey, Eddie. Check it out. My new neighborhood. Hey, Eddie. Check out the... <laughs> Whoa, getting seasick? Whoa, Eddie, like my hammock? Cool, huh? Hey, Eddie, we got so many trees. I'll send you a little one. You can put it up in your room. Hey, Eddie. <sighs> sure, I can use one of Gus's chili dogs right now. Uh-oh, Bernie's going low. Later, dude. We should be getting that tree any day now. Only one person rings the buzzer like that. Our building super, Fred. Eddie, this is Fred. There's a, a package here for you. <laughs> you better get down here right away. I figured it was the little tree Kelvin was sending me. But it was a real big tree. Eddie, Eddie, watch with this, huh? I told Fred it was a gift from Kelvin. Kelvin? Kelvin sent you this tree all the way from Carson City. Wonderful, wonderful. Eddie, you cannot keep this tree in your apartment. And do you know why, Eddie? Because the tree won't survive in your apartment. A tree cannot grow in your apartment. You know, Eddie, this is a lovely tree, though. A very lovely... Look, it still has its roots. You know, it smells some cinnamon, huh? This is a ponderosa pine. A ponderosa pine. But, Eddie, you can't keep it in your apartment. The landlady won't like it, I won't like it, the tree won't like it. Nobody's gonna like it, Eddie. So you gotta get this tree out of here. Now, what are you gonna do with this tree, Eddie? You can't leave it here. Here it cannot be, mm -hmm. So I was the proud owner of a ponderosa pine, and I didn't know what to do with it. So I put it out on the sidewalk while I went to school. I figured I'd find a place for it later. Tree. Christmas tree. Why are trees important to us? Adam, why do we need trees? They make the world look beautiful. They give us papers and oxygen. They give us fruit. If it wasn't for trees, we wouldn't have chairs, we wouldn't have desks, we wouldn't have... Everyone was talking about houses, trees. So First Kel, then Fred, and now Miss Tolliver. What material do you get? What is it called, everybody? Wood! Yeah, we get that wood from trees. Good for you. Take a look here. I brought in a map today. 
it can tell you where all the different types of trees can be found in this country. Take a good look at this map. What do you notice here? We notice that there are oak trees in the east, magnolia trees in the south, fir trees in the north, and of course, ponderosa pine we'd find over here. Ponderosa pines in the west. OK, very nice. So you know what I'm going to have you do today? We're going to make maps out of clay. Thank you. So Miss Tolliver gave us some clay Giving and some maps. State. You got Alabama, Virginia, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, Oregon, Arizona, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Before you begin, you're going to first fill in a map ratio sheet. We had to change the miles from the map into inches. Make sure you have the correct distances on your map. So if 100 miles is equivalent to one inch, then 200 miles would be equivalent to how many inches? Linda? It will be equivalent to two inches. OK, to two inches on your state of Alabama, where it says 600 miles. How long a distance is that going to be? Six inches. Good for you. And then when you go across, you have 250 miles. So how many inches would that be? Two, two, two and a half inches. OK. Who can tell us? What is the ratio? Jessica. Comparison of two quantities. Good for you. OK. You may begin. So we filled out our charts. Get your chart filled out. Let's go. So for 700 miles, how many inches was that? Seven inches. Seven inches, and for 350 here? Three and a half inches. Good for you, okay. We measured the borders of our states. What's the unit of measure you're using? Inches. Okay, inches. Show me the measurements for this side. Three and a half inches. Okay, good. Then we cut out our clay maps. How you doing here? Uh, oh, what are you? Look at this. You guys like to get. Oh, Illinois was great. Okay. Okay, good. From this piece to this point, how many inches? Eight inches. All right, good job. Let's see your state. Alabama. Oklahoma. Illinois. Oregon. Virginia. This is Arizona. We use 700 miles, which is seven inches on this side. This is the state of Utah, and we use three inches here, six inches here, and five inches and five inches. OK, very nice job. Everyone, what state is that? New York. And very nice job. So we all had fun making maps and learning about ratios. Okay, good, you did a good job with this. Then Miss Tolliver brought out her tree map now, again. If we're in New York City over in this area, would you find ponderosa pines or Douglas fir over on the East Coast? No. Okay. Well, there was one ponderosa pine on the East Coast. Mine. So uh, this is your tree? Uh-huh. Well, it's against the law to be leaving trees out on the sidewalk, especially ones with roots. The city's going to be by in the morning to haul it away. So I suggest if you want to keep it, get it off the sidewalk, OK? Now, I'm just going to give you a warning this time. Have a nice day. Cool tree. So there I was, me and a tree. What was I supposed to do with it? You know, that song reminds me of a story. When I was a little girl, I used to go to my grandpa's house every day. And in front of his house, there was this huge tree. And it was the only tree on the block, so all the neighbors would come by and just hang out under it. And during the summer, when it was really hot, we'd sit under its shade and drink lemonade, and talk, play games. We had some great times under that tree. Then one day, the city came and cut it down because the roots were damaging the water pipes. Yeah. Things were never quite the same after that. 
Anyway, just a story. This is Glenda. Talk to you tomorrow. After dinner. Early the next morning, I made a phone call to Central Park. City Parks Department, New York's finest, Ranger Rex Rivers speaking. Hi, Ranger Rex. Hi. How are you? Say again? Ah, oh, got yourself a tree, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Ah, sounds like your ponderosa pine, species Pinus ponderosa. Yes, yes, I'm an expert on trees. Hello. Somebody sent it to you? Roots and all? I see. And now you want to plant it in Central Park? Look, son, we can't have people planting trees in Central Park. City Park Code 109, Section 2C clearly states that no unauthorized trees or plants can be planted in Central Park. I'm sorry, but rules are rules, especially in New York City. Excuse me, would you beat it, kid? Can't you see I'm on official business? May I suggest you uh, chop it up and use it for firewood? Well, that was just a joke. Look, I work, live, and breathe trees. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't take your tree, I'm sorry. That's a no can do. Sorry, can't help you. No, I'm, I'm stumped. I mean, is uh, I, uh, I'm in a, a log jam. I, I mean, uh, I, I, what I'm trying to say. Hello. Hello. Enjoy. <coughs> Species, Trius humongous. Hey there. Smells good. So Ranger Rex, the tree expert, would my tree. Then I went over to Vincent's. I asked him if he wanted a tree for my yard. Eddie, I live on the fifth floor. A house plant I can handle like a fern, but a pine tree. Eddie, do yourself a favor. Send that Ponderosa back to the Cartwrights. <laughs> My name is Arnold Wilson, and I'm a forester. As foresters, our mission is to care for the land and maintain that forest in a healthy state. My name is Brad Washa, and I'm a prescribed fire planner. And what I do for the Forest Service is planning prescribed burns, where we go out and intentionally start wildfires. Fire is actually a, a natural part of the ecosystem and it helps improve the health of the trees. It's killing some of the old and decadent trees and, and letting those trees that are healthy do better. If the forest is very dense, the amount of sunlight that comes through uh, is very limited. If there's a lot of trees out there, we may have to do control fires or prescribe fires. So we create some openings to reduce some of the densities to let sunlight through. So that you'll get more grasses or more uh, nutritious vegetation growing in the area. We use ratios to determine how many trees we have out there and how much we need to remove. So in this area, they may want up to 10% of the trees killed. So in every 10 trees you have out there, only one of those they want to kill, so that's a one to 10 ratio. Fire has a really important role in, in our ecosystems. I'm Charlotte Miner, and I'm a landscape architect. I get to design and think about where I want things and how I want things to look. This picnic ground is one of the projects that I've uh, designed. My name is Tessa Krause, and I'm a civil engineer with the Forest Service. 
I have overseen uh, constructions of road design, bridges, recreation sites like this, which is a picnic ground. And then my job is to see that it is built according to specifications. We do use ratios in the design of our recreation sites. Ratios give me a nice broad view of what a site looks like. I have a scale here that has several different ratios of feet to inches on it. And that way I can measure where a bench needs to be placed, where a bridge needs to be placed, a uh, table. When I stake a location, I can say, okay, I want it right here. When the person who's installing it comes to it, they can look at it and they know exactly what to do. <laughs> well, I think this is one of the best jobs anybody could have. I love working for the Forest Service, being able to work outdoors in charge of construction. I just like getting out in the woods and helping nature out a little bit. The greatest satisfaction is protecting the forest for future generations. I love being outside. In the forest, in my office. <laughs>
that little pine tree became a big deal. Wow. There's been a major buzz about this ponderosa pine tree all over town all week long. And I still don't know who planted this lonesome pine. I'm waiting for that one call. The lines are open. So that's the story of the lonesome pine. I don't know what the ratio of trees to people is in New York City, but it's a little better now. Please give Glenda a call. You know who you are. Anyway, time to close the files. But first, I got a phone call to make. I have a feeling tomorrow's gonna be a big day. PBS.